Hey everybody, I am back in the lab here. Um, I'm gonna do a, well, I'm gonna check the chain tension on my KTM and um, haven't done that before, but um, I've got the factory service manual. So I'm just gonna kind of roll through that step by step, see if it's in spec after getting it back from the, um, having the tires installed and um, probably check the tension on the um, rear axle nut as well. Lucky for me, my bike came with a factory service manual since I bought it from the original owner. And um, here on page 33 is the procedure for getting the correct chain uh, tension and the correct torque spec for the rear axle nut. So uh, we'll, we'll follow that, but it looks like um, in that top image, you can see the um, amount of deflection um, that you're, you're looking for um, on the chain and you're wanting the top part of the chain to be um, taut when you're looking for that deflection. So we'll, we'll see if we can replicate that and see where we stand. So if we did need to make an adjustment to the chain tension, um, we'd be coming back to, to the swing arm. And these are the adjusters here. Um, they're on both sides. And these blocks can slide in this channel forward or backward. And actually I'm seeing a lot of dirt in there. So before I did that, I would um, clean that out and um, probably even even lube it up a little bit. Um, this bike really needs a, a washing. I have it, I didn't um, wash it between the last ride and, and working on it right now, so I owe it that. But um, you can use these two dots as reference points, excuse me, these two dots as reference points for how far or back it is because you're gonna want those even side to side um, in order for the wheel to be in alignment um, um, left to right. Uh, otherwise, it'll it'll cause a, a misalignment, which if it's far enough off, will really throw off the balance of the bike and cause it to pull one way or the other. And I'm gonna move around to the other side so you can see. So there's the axle, I guess they call it the collar nut, which is the one I was saying needs to be torqued to 80 Newton meters. And, um, and here's the adjuster. Um, so what the procedure in the, in the manual states is you back this off you don't have to go super loose, but you just loosen it a little bit. Um, and then you, you adjust these side to side. So let's see, I didn't really pay attention, but they look pretty close side to side. Although honestly, now I'm gonna look more closely. Um, I also noticed, so I took this to a new shop and, I, and um, I'm a little bit skeptical um, after being burned at a previous shop. So um, it just looks to me, I didn't look at this before, but you can see how that nut is a little rounded and I just wonder if he used an impact wrench on it, which um, probably he did the taking it off. I hope he didn't putting it back on. I really wish he didn't taking it off, but um, anyway, I, I will, um, I'll probably end up backing it off, repositioning both of these guys to make sure they're pretty spot on and then retightening it up. But there's one, so you can see, um, I'll look at this front edge is, pretty close. So it's almost centered, but it's a little rearward of center between those two dots is how I'm seeing that one. And you could, you could also, I'm not sure, but uh, another way that might be helpful to check is you could measure the, dis the amount of threads on here with the caliper. And then, so we'll go back to the other side again. This may be, you could also just rewind the tape um, and look at it. And so this one's sitting more forward for sure. So. I'm tempted to loosen this guy up and um, I might thread this adjuster uh, a little bit out and, and try to get this wheel in a little bit better alignment because I'm not totally digging how, um, how they did it, I don't think. Okay. So before I get started with actually tearing stuff off, I was just gonna clean this out a little bit. So I got a little carb spray, which probably isn't exactly what you need and it's going to drip on the chain so I'm going to want to re again re-lubricate it but and then I just got a couple brushes that are soft brushes this is a plastic one and um I've got a brass one too that you could get in there that's honestly it's um going to be good for me but so what I there's probably better like simple green or Windex is actually a, a pretty good um cleaner for just a little bit of surface grind and stuff. You probably don't need to use a, a solvent like carb spray or something. And so the important thing to remember is when you do the adjustments that when you adjust one side, 
it's gonna affect the other side. So if I pull the other side out, it's gonna effectively kind of move this uh, side in and probably will create some slack on the chain. So um, you won't be able to just do one side and call it done. You'll have to do it, check the chain tension and likely make some final small adjustments at the end. Okay, so got them cleaned up a little bit, um, got them lubed a tiny bit. And it also recommends you lubricate or grease these adjusters um, when you are all done um, or when you are loosened up before you tighten them up and get all done. Um, it just says, the manual says to do that on a regular basis, which makes sense. Um, so um, I, I just wanted, I wanted to point out the tools that look like I'll need. So the, uh, this is the adjuster. Um, that looks like it's a 10 millimeter. So you want a 10 mil wrench. This guy is a 13 and this nut, um, I just was, was checking around and it, it comes out to a, a one and one sixteenth um, SAE size, which I believe is about a 27 mil metric. Um, there's a lot of overlap as the sizes get larger between SAE and metric. Um, so if you don't have the full set, you could probably find the metric version. So let's see. And then a, a breaker bar like this, um, I share a shop, so I um, spray paint all my tools red somewhere usually, and um, it makes them easy to easy to see if they're mine or not. Um, you could lower this down a tiny bit so the back wheel's on the ground, because you're gonna wanna kind of hit this a little bit to probably get the, the nut loose. Actually, I don't know, we'll see. Um, so I didn't check the torque, but it's 80 Newton meters, remember, is what's supposed to be, so. Yeah, that was, uh, pretty firm, so I'll back it off a little bit and a little bit more. Okay, so now it's spinning pretty easy. Not quite hand tight, but there you go. Okay. Okay, the next step is going to be uh, to loosen up the lock nuts for the adjusters. So again, these are the lock nuts. Um, they keep the adjusters from moving in and out on their own. Um, so you're gonna wanna get in there. Sometimes I find just a little bit of doing that, a little pop and it's like your uh, human impact wrench um, gets the job done. So I'm gonna loosen that one up and you wanna get both of them loose first. the sound of success the bell that tells us that we're victorious so I'm just kind of double checking um, over here and over here how far off we are you can actually see it the wheel just slid back a little so um, I think I'm gonna move this adjuster in to get them close this one looked like it was too far back and um, so I'm gonna turn this one in. Again, it's a 10 mil and it probably won't need too much. Maybe a couple, I don't know, I'm just kind of guesstimating, but maybe a couple turns. And if the lock nut starts to move too close, you just back it off again and keep, keep an eye on it. So to me, it's really, it's kind of hard to see, but there's, I'll, see, I'll close in there. There's a uh, little dimple marks in that. So what I'm gonna do, let's see, is I'm gonna adjust it. I'm just gonna leave it right there actually for now. And I'm just gonna swing around the other side, see where the dimples are on, the on that side. Pretty, pretty close. Um, one dimple is almost centered, one dimple's kind of on the lip. This one's still a little further out. So I, I think, I don't know if, uh, I, you remember I mentioned that you could probably take a, a caliper and, and measure the distance of the adjuster screws um, and, to get them close. And, and I think that actually would work um, just based on what I'm seeing. That would, it kind of implies that they're identical, but okay, I think I went too far on that. so. We'll, Let's, you gotta make sure you're, you're shoving both sides in all the way though, otherwise you're not gonna get an accurate look. But 
This one is still the same. So now I'll, I'll hold it in and then I'll just crank it back until it looks about right. That's, even that's pretty close. And my guess is, okay, I'm gonna kind of call that good for, for right now. Um, and what we'll do is I'll lock these down and sometimes the, the tensioner might move a tiny bit when you lock it down. Um, but you'll, we'll wanna recheck the chain tension um, to make sure it's still within spec because now we've moved now we've moved the rear wheel a little bit and that will affect the chain tension. So I'm just snugging up the, the lock nuts. I'm not going crazy. Um, there probably is a torque spec over there in the manual which I can regurgitate in a moment. Again, I'll do a final look. This dimple is pretty centered and this dimple is pretty centered. So I'm pretty happy with that. So um, I'll, I'll torque this down, giving this some pressure and then uh, we'll recheck the uh, chain tension. Okay, so I'm just tightening this axle nut. I'm giving some, this is not in the manual, but this is how I'm doing it pushing the wheel forward so it doesn't slide back. Um, I imagine if you if you let the wheel back down onto the ground a little bit, it would kind of do this on its own, but I'm just gonna crank this a little bit by hand. Um, I'm not gonna torque it right now. I'm gonna do that last, but I'm gonna give it enough so it stays in place. So that has some, some tension on it now. It's not gonna go anywhere. That should be enough for me to check the chain tension. So I'm gonna go back to the other side and do that. Okay, if you guys are being good students, uh, you'll remember that we were looking for um, eight to 10 millimeters of deflection on the bottom of the chain, just past where that chain guard ends. So uh, so again, it says the push up there and we're kinda, I'm kinda eyeballing it. Or I'm, I'm really eyeballing it. Like, by kinda, I mean extremely. Um, and that is about eight. Let's do, let me move the chain position a little and see what, see what, if we get another. So that's a little further back now, but like there is kinda what the image in the book looks like. And that's about 10. Um, I mean, and then again, you want to make sure the top, the top is taut. So I'll roll it a little bit more. To me, that looks like a good measurement. You can, another way you can do this is there's a little per, protruding section on the back, but, um, or, you know, you could stick something in there that measures 10 mils, another possibility. Um, if you find a wrench or something that's got about a 10 mil thickness to it, that could be a good, almost like a feeler gauge. So like the round part of this is, is 10. So if I were to, oops, I moved it a little bit. You can see it's a little in, but there it's like perfect. There's a little in, so it's probably closer to, you know, seven. Um, if I were to say, I bet the front of this is pretty close to eight. Yeah, I mean, the thickness of this part of the wrench on the head is about eight. And so it's hitting right there. Hitting right there. Right, so I'm gonna call it good. It might be seven. Um, you guys give me feedback that are out riding doing maintenance. Is, am I, if I run my chain with that much, with that tension, is that gonna be the end of, of me? I don't know. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go back and um, I'm gonna torque that um, axle nut to 80 and then we will uh, call it uh, good. I'll leave it, I'll leave things up and, and we'll leave it at that. Oh, I was, last thing I was gonna say though is um, when it comes to greasing this stuff, I like this brake parts lubricant, which you may have, there's a lot of places that make them. It's, it's kind of like a paste. Um, sometimes it's silver or gold and it's, or you'll see it sometimes um, as anti-seize too. 
and it's a good, it's high temp. You don't need a lot. You could just brush a tiny little bit on there and uh, it'll stay on there. And that's what, if, if and when I grease these, um, I'll be using some form of anti-seize or brake parts uh, lubricant probably. Okie dokie. So I, uh, I lied, I did a little bit of a, another behind the scenes adjustment. I, I decided seven was too loose for my taste. So I went um, and rolled these back both on both sides a tiny bit. And I, I found a, a wrench, my three quarter inch wrench. I put the caliper on it. It's totally eight millimeters, like on the, on the closer to nine mil side. And I was able to do what I did before and kind of use it as a feeler gauge and I got a really consistent like eight to nine millimeters of deflection, top of the chain, good. So um, so as a reminder, um, this is not yet tight um, and these are snug now. Um, I will uh, check them again though. And so we're gonna go to 90 Newton meters. So I have a torque wrench and it's got both uh, Newton meters and uh, um, pound feet foot pounds, I still don't know the answer to that. Um, so let me set it to 80 really quick. Um, these have a lock on them, so you, you can lock them into whichever uh, setting you want. And this is the old school style, not super old school style with the meter, but the old school style that, that clicks. It's not a digital one that beeps. So, um, you know, for whatever that's worth. Okay. So I'm gonna lock that into place. I'm sorry, this is off screen here, but um, it may be hard to do this with the bike on the stand. So you might wanna just get it close and then I'm actually gonna stand up so I can get some leverage. I'm kind of pushing down with one hand and um, yeah, that's not working. So I'm gonna jam the wheel here. And you'll be able to hear it when it clicks. So. There we go. All right. So now we're torqued. It's spinning okay. Um, so I think the last thing I'm gonna do here is uh, l just lube, clean and lube the chain one more time really quick. Here's a quick uh, tool tech tip. Um, when you store your torque wrench, don't store it um, twist it up to a torque setting, always back it all the way off. Um, I, I believe there's an internal spring that can wear on some of these. So I was taught that by a mechanic friend of mine. And so I always do that practice. That way it'll stay um, close to accurate for as long as possible. All right, it is arts and crafts time at the shop. Recently in one of my, you know, um, pop-up ad feeds or, or searching for stuff. I saw them selling these this like they advertise it as a tire brake protector for with chain cleaning and I thought oh, that is a cool idea, but it was like 16 or 20 bucks and I was kind of looking at it. and It's like it's basically just cardboard um, So I just remembered that now as I'm about to go clean up this chain. I was like I could probably make something so just uh, pulled out the tin snips because that's the closest cutting device I had and um, found this cardboard and just cut a hole in it. So um, I just eyeballed it. You could probably do a better job, but I think it's gonna work. So let's see. So the whole idea is, you know, you're spraying grease and lube. Yeah, look at that. Oh, totally perfect, sort of. So you have to, I'll have to hold it, but. So I'm using the Motul, Motul chain cleaner. I'm just gonna, Spray it liberally on here because I have my cover now, so I don't have to worry. So one thing to just remember is I'm only getting the top of the chain right here. So if I'm going to be a good mechanic in there, that's my link. So I know I've gone around once. If I'm going to be a good mechanic and steward of this vehicle, I'll probably want to hit uh, the the inner part of the chain as well. One thing you don't want to do though is get your fingers caught inside the chain. So, so stay well clear of the, of the inside here of the sprocket when you're cleaning it. Um, what I'll do now is I'm gonna get a clean rag and I will wipe off the excess. Um, I feel like I got it cleaned pretty good. And 
with the Motul, then you um, let it dry for a little bit and then you can spray their lube on, which I'm not gonna do that every time I ride, but the last time I ride, I did um, take this through a little bit of water and the chain picked up a squeak. Um, so I, I did lube it that time and I, I'm gonna do that again. So again, um, with the Motul, it just says to let it dry. I usually like to wipe off excess. And again, you wanna be really careful with your fingers here. So just kind of kind of go around, ignore the cardboard. It's actually kind of in my way right now, but there we go. And um, of note, or as as a note, I should say, I looked uh, I looked at the Motul chain clean that I was just um, using, and it's it says it's safe for uh, O-ring and X-ring and other chains. So. Um, regardless of what type of chain this is, it sounds like I'll be in pretty good knack. It's been about five minutes anyway, so now I'm gonna use the off-road chain lube. So they have an on-road and an off-road chain lube. Um, I'm just gonna hit the top right now because it is kind of a messy scenario. So let's see if I can do this without making a horrible mess, but I already, I already made a horrible mess. I'm sorry, guys. Let's see. I had such a good system before. What happened? It just stopped working, but that's okay. So we'll just do that. Do that. There we go. Even though the cardboard's spinning freely now, I will say it still feels like it's helping just from uh, dripping all over my tires. And, it, and it's especially good uh, for this part. I would say because this this lubricant is uh, it has like a tackiness to it, a stickiness, so it's gonna be more likely to you know, stand there. So I, I saw the uh, link chain go by. I'm seeing lubricated chains right now, and I'm feeling good. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna leave this cardboard on just to deflect the drips, but I'm gonna go in and just get the real heavy overspray and it's it's gonna be dripping up front too. So I'm gonna go in there and kind of clean, um, clean kind of the overspray off. I do have a bristle brushes and stuff that came with this setup and you can kind of pat it. Some of the places it's gonna get on there. Afterward, I might even go around it again and just kind of hit a couple of places where I know it's, it's um, gonna be a little runny, but that will at least give you a little extra protection. Um, so I'll leave the cardboard on it for another minute, just to make sure it catches all the drips. But um, yeah, uh, this thing is pretty much lubricated. It's the, the tension has been checked on the chain. All right, um, please, uh, if you find this stuff helpful or useful and wanna keep seeing more, please like and subscribe. And um, I hope, um, you guys all uh, get out there and in, into the garage and start doing some of this stuff yourself and, and then get out there on the trail and hope to see you out there as well. All right, take care, everybody.